Good day everyone, we are going to talk about Module 2 of Lesson 3 for Audio Visual Media, a presentation for PC213 Presentation Blog. And we have our introduction. Audio visual materials are the most complete resources for teachers due to their availability and versatility. They enhance the learning experience of students and teachers alike. Examples for audiovisual materials are AV in short, that we have PLP, laptop, phone, chart, and clip chart. These examples really are helpful for them, which is accessible but difficult to manipulate if you didn't know how to use and utilize. Description of concept. We have audio material and visual material. Audio materials are tools to convey information to the sound. For visual material, tools to convey information through sight. An example for audio materials which are MP3, and radio. For visuals, we have phone, laptop, and TV. And we have audiovisual material, a combination of both sight and sound to convey information, and audio refers to sounds reproduced by a computer or any device. Examples for AV materials are laptops, computers, and phones. And for audio, we have recorded voice like podcasts and MP3 songs on iTunes and Spotify. Then, and lastly, is we have video. Video is an electronic medium for recording, copying, and broadcasting of moving visual images. An example for video is we have cameras with video settings on it or phones that can be able to record videos too. Next, we have function of audiovisual materials. First, we have teaching music literature, science and documentation activities, teaching language and other content areas, to foster oral communication, to motivate interpretation, and to make use of sketches and broadcast. An example situation for this is that teachers present their presentation with ease without using textbooks. They can bring more examples so that the students understand more about the topic discussed. Next, we have types of audiovisual materials. We have audio. Under audio, we have recording. These may come in cassettes or CDs. And radio broadcast, which is a transmission of radio programs, can be live or tape. And we have visual media, bulletin boards, a form to display information on a board, and posters, a form of display information using text and pictures. This visual media that both bulletin boards and posters go along with each other. These two are usually found where people gathered around like memos, dots and crowns, scheduled meetings and announcements. We have audiovisual media, motion pictures, videos, videos of sound mixed with motion images, and films. Large sequences of animated scenes and sounds. An example for motion media or motion picture 
because we have an animated scene for a clip like Sponge, uh, SpongeBob Squarepants. And for films, we have an example is the full animated film, Inside Out. We have guidelines for audiovisual materials. Images should be always as small as possible. Always provide alternative content. Check copyright. Use MP4 format a size of 640 by 400 MSP or 500 KPS. When using images, you should be always be mindful your mindful of your what topic and what pictures you should be using. And always check for copyright. Of course, you have to check for copyright for that picture or your or your images or photos you are using or else you don't want to have watermarks in your images. And of course, when putting a video on your video presentation is that you have to use a B4 of course. Of course. We have provide transcripts for audio and video files and save audio files in mono format. An example for transcript is that if your audience is deaf yet wants, wants to participate, they can read the transcript of you speaking or watching a foreign film with sub, uh, subtitles since you don't understand a conversation. And for mono, mono means one. You must use one single mic or else it will be ruined for the quality of the audio. We have uses of audio visual materials. We have stimulate interest and emphasis, promote efficiency, and clarify subject topics. Of course, it is very useful for the reason the audience attention will you and the end your AV material. Simple, the better, and neat. Next, we have advantages of using audiovisual materials in teaching. can be reused and reduce the quantity of asked questions. It is true since it is a waste of time explaining things with an example video to help you. With your AV videos, the audience will minimize asking you questions since you have the material needed. We have disadvantages of using audiovisual materials in teaching. Requires correct use. Not all concepts can be taught. Should include only images not unfit for boards and might not guarantee learning. To prepare it, good pronunciation is needed. It can be difficult to understand for children. A good internet speed is required. And the proper it is really difficult since you have to search far and wide for the best examples for your work. Sometimes it will not go well with your topic. Most speakers are conscious and are conscious of their grammar and pronunciation. That was the time. Not all, not all have good internet speed and it sucks and stresses you out. If you don't have proper equipment, that will bring you down at the quality of your video and audio is going to be bad. Ways to use audio to support learning. Unit podcast examples, weekly updates of teaching material and current situation. Live online discussion between two or more people. Sometimes, podcasts can be used for learning since they have a large genre catering a lot of topics. I was once listening to a horror podcast and it's great if you have tasks or going to sleep while listening. Then for 
live online discussion teachers and students alike using the most common ones like Zoom and Meet though we have Discord and Skype too though they are not known for some students especially if you're not a gamer no? if you're not a gamer or you don't know how to use it we have interviews with subject matter experts these can be used as core or supporting for lessons and student generated recordings used as part of a learner activity or to record evidence these AV media can be used as your supporting idea to discussion that that if you have a you want to clarify things using videos we have recordings of public lectures those can be repurposed and used for different contexts and subjects though there are teachers who record their class for them to use as documentation and for attendance of participation Ways to use video to support learning To demonstrate experiments, example, sodium solution plus the periodic table To exemplify abstract concepts, example, what is inside a flame To illustrate 3D models Some video materials can be used like an experiment, experiment to compare things of bells and uh, pictures and uh, pictures of the video we have the de- to demonstrate time passes example is an awesome actually stinky slow mo video or to demonstrate decision making processes example is conflict between the workplace so to- workplace sources and solutions some can be used to perform activities like Zumba or follow me exercise activities. To summarize, to illustrate performances and music, and to show practical activities. Example of that is a melting metal. There are three steps in producing audiovisuals. We have planning, the most critical aspect of producing. It requires the purpose of why, brainstorming of how, and the preparation. Planning everything out is the first, the very first step of everything, since you can change everything from lines to recording. Second, production. Production, the shooting or recording stage, is what most people consider the production phase of an audio or a video project. In a production, it starts that time where you make yourself shine. These scenes and clips of videos or audio or raw that can be edited throughout the process will be discussed in the next slide. Publishing. Publishing phase is the final part of producing audio or video or video for educational purposes and is often referred to as post production and requires editing. Of course, not all video are for educational purposes, some are for entertainment. Though though these are the apps used to upload upload your videos for example like that we have YouTube Vimeo and Skillshare in publishing videos online be responsible and search of what audience you're going to present and we have programs to create edit and publish videos
we have audacity is to record and arrange videos this is the apps this is the app and garage band is to record and edit sound this is the app and windows media is to record and edit video and here is the app or the logo next we have Windows Movie Maker is a free use edit. Here is the app or the logo. The Virtual DJ is a free use to edit sounds and video. Here, here is the logo or the app logo. And QuickTime Pro is a video editing software. These three are for edit app logos. Next, we have. Using the web, publish, using the web, accessing to YouTube, Vimeo, or SlideShare. The most common one, common platform to upload your videos is YouTube. Some uses Vimeo or SlideShare, and some uses the online paying platform like Skillshare. Next, we have audio visual sample for elementary. These are the sites, ABC, TheVoiceAmerica.com, and StoryNori. Unfortunately, I cannot see this link, so I don't have the, I don't have the, what do you call this, the example for BBC, but still, I have Example for voiceamerica.com and Starinori. And this is the website for voiceamerica.com. And we have Starinori. This is the website. Actually, I I, I really really like the story for Alice in the Wonderland and, and I swear they are really good especially if you don't know how to speak English very well and we have the last part the conclusion teachers must educate themselves in the the learning process of the students. Thus, the use of audiovisual material should be encouraged to enhance what we learn and teach. For me, in my conclusion, my opinion is that teachers must be competent enough, especially in this new normal we have since we have the pandemic, the COVID-19. Didn't know how this how this pandemic ends, and I don't know this pandemic actually ends since the spread of the virus is still ongoing. That's why we, future educators or future teachers, we have to know we know how to adapt things and to adapt. And of course, we are we are also. For 21st century learners, you have to know basic things and how to present, th uh, present videos online and what content we are going to discuss about. It's really, really uh, an advantage to us, but it's an advantage to most people or what is what you say, the older generation, if, it, if they didn't know how to use internet for their advantage. So there is a first time of everything actually, you, know, uh, you just have time or you, have, you want to learn more about the technology or the internet so that, they can, so that you can use it to your advantage. And, and these are the 
reference that to the part of the population. And that concludes our presentation for today. Thank you and have a nice day.